Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and I return to the the beautiful insanity that is uh, Turnip 28. Um, I've made one previous video about Turnip 28 and I'll, I'll pop that in the description below. What that video essentially did was just uh, an introduction into into well, my world of Turnip 28 um, and the first army that I'd completed for it which I'd called the 13th Cohort. Uh, and what I did in that video was more of an army showcase. Um, I didn't really talk into the... I'll go into detail about the hows um, how, uh, or the techniques I'd use to really, really make them. And since I put that video out and, you know, from posting on Instagram, I've had quite a few people contacting me and saying, you know, how do you do this? What did you do? What did you use to make that? What figures were used for this? So I thought it was time for a second video because I've started building uh, my second um, Term 28 Regiment. Um, so what I thought I'd do is, because this is only half done, I'll be able to show you what I've done so far and also what they look like before they're painted. So this will give you an idea of the bits and pieces that I've used and just what, what I used to, to, to make my Term 28. It's a fascinating, fascinating world. And if, like me, you love kit bashing and combining different kits, the, the whole aesthetic just appeals to me so much. Um, I, I'm I'm really really into this, and like I said, this, this is my second second term 20, 28 army that I'm building. Um, that's what I just thought I'd show you what I've been up to. So let's have a bit of a recap because the current army is slightly different um, looks wise and sort of aesthetic to the, the previous one. So the first army that I did, the 13th cohort, they were largely based on a sort of black powder. Napoleonic feel. So here we have a unit of um, grogs or brutes as they're known um, outside of the, the Slugs Lament cult. So as you can see what I've used to build these is Napoleonic bodies um, and then just added some some strange heads and the like to, <laughs> to build these. I think these are, um, these are French uh, light line infantry uh, by Warlord Games. Um, yes, very very strange, and you can see they've got the the uh, the quintessential roots and growths on them, as is befitting a turn at twenty eight army. So, is is another is another base. Now these are just a this is just a, a base of fodder. Um, so these are going to be your main the mainstay of your your army. And again, you can see the the Napoleonic uh, sort of themed black powder. They got they got muskets. Uh, they got the old um, the polygonic uniforms, um, and that was the basis for my my first my first turn of twenty eight army. The second one I'm doing is a, a bit different. What I've what I've opted for is sort of a more medieval, old school, not even quite fantasy, but imagine imagine dark medieval, dark fantasy. And um, as with turn of twenty eight, if you are familiar with turn of twenty eight rules, when you take your regiment. You base them around a cult, and this gives you certain characters, certain special rules and abilities. So the 13th cohort are based around the Slug's Lament, which give you a free unit of um, these guys. So these these are grogs. And you get a free unit of those. Now for my, my second one, I'm using um, it's called the Knights of Shellwood, which means I can take <laughs> I can take knights riding giants. Knights riding giant snails. So I even struggle to get that out. Um, and I have built, well I've not built, but I've utilised a giant snail. But we'll get to that later on in the video. What I thought I'd do first is show you what I've done so far. So I've completed um, two bases. Now let's start off with these. So this is a base of brutes. As you can see, very, very different to the previous brutes these have got Napo um the other the other chaps had napoleonic uniforms uh, sort of black powder era these are more medieval more rustic more rural looking um slightly more disturbing looking as well <laughs> if i'm being completely honest these get these these guys are terrifying um so have i made these um let's run through so the bodies they are all um 100 years war figures made by perry miniatures and what I love about these is they're so versatile. Um, they they scale well with other other kits, um, as you can see from these. Because the other kits I've used 
uh, for these are a mixture of um, frost grave cultists as you can see the heads at the back there very very spooky looking and also the arms and the weapons are largely from uh, fireforge games they do i think they're called um living living dead peasants <laughs> if i can if i can remember right. i'll pop some pictures on the screen um of the actual boxes that i've been using but as you can see they went together really well you wouldn't tell they were they were you know kit bash from three different kits uh, and again just like the other ones they've got their roots they've got their growths all over them um, when i show you the unpainted bases i'll go through the technique that i use to add them so that is one unit by itself six uh brutes um very very happy with how those turned those turned out the um the mud is something i use across a lot of my a lot of my basin i did i did recently put a tutorial on instagram about how, how I go about making this mud. Uh, it's really, really simple. It's just Vallejo uh, thick mud and a Vallejo water effect. Okay, so let's move on to second base. Now these, this is a, a, a base of oh, half a unit of fodder. Now these are armed with, with um, missile weapons. Now with missile weapons in, in turn of 28, you can either have black powder weapons, which are sort of muskets, um, or you can give them sort of bows and arrows and crossbows. That's why, I, but keeping with the the aesthetic, I've gone for these chaps more sort of medieval looking. Um, I've gone for a mix of crossbows and longbows. And again, same kits as before. So uh, Perry Miniatures Hundred Years War. Um, the heads are from um, the Fire Forge, um, Living Undead, or li Living Dead Peasants. I'll get that right one day. And again, the weapons of the bow, the crossbows and the longbows are from uh, Perry Miniatures. Um, but they just, the, the the heads from the Fireforge box are absolutely fantastic. I was blown away by the detail on them. And again, they fit together really well. I mean, there's three different kits all slapped together <laughs> to, make, to make a really unique looking unit. Um, that's one thing I like about the, 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 the aesthetic behind Turn 28 is this is the same unit as these guys but look at the look at the vast difference between them you know more napoleonic black powder and then with these guys you've got the the the, the rustic the medieval the dark fantasy looking so they're the, the two finished bases so far um so what i'm going to do now is show you some that haven't been painted and hopefully this will give you a bit of a a look at how i build these let's let's go with the the second base of the uh, the missile weapon armed fodder so as you can see there they are just a plain plastic hope you can see that it's plain plastic kits and hopefully that'll show that they go together really really well i mean they just they just fit together and i've i don't think on any of these i've used any green stuff whatsoever to fill in gaps they just they just seem to work it's uncanny it's the it's the turnip 28 way and again, they, they look suitably grotesque and grim. Um, so what they are going to be is the the second base to, to that unit there, unit 12. So as you can see, they've got the, um, the tufts. So what, what do I use? Well, I use tufts, army painter tufts. Now they look a bit, a bit soft at the moment. Look at that, you know. But what happens is once you've painted them and added a wash and left them, they dry and they go really quite, quite coarse. Uh, and matted and it gives that that, that uh, quite frankly awful turnip 28 look um, of these growths and roots growing off these people so if you are using the um the the tufts and um, don't worry if they they're a bit sort of flimsy or soft once you've painted them and, and washed them yeah they will they will dry in a really coarse way um another thing that you notice as well is that i i they're, they're glued to the base already i, I paint them like this in, in batches of six I, i'm i'm not even a neat painter when i paint these you don't have to be um it's all about the the drabness and the the overall look of the units um and the highlights i don't use many highlights but they 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 kind of kind of stark and they do stand out um but that's the second base of fodder that will go with them and then we have the third unit again these are all built but not painted so this is a um a group of Another unit of fodder, but these are armed with sort of hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand combat weapons. So here I've used, like I say, a good mixture 
of the Fireforge um, Living Dead Peasants, both for the heads and the weapons. I love the weapons because they look like they could be used um, sort of tilling the land or, or what what land there is to till or harvest um, in turn 28. And they've doubled up as sort of, you know, close combat weapons. Um, so again, the same, the same combination of bodies and heads and weapons being used on these chaps. Um, and the tufts as well, the army painter um, tufts. Let's look at the second base. And again, you know, they're carrying pitchforks, they're carrying, there's a, um, uh, an axe. Um, and I, I guys even carrying, I mean, a lantern is from the, um, the, the, the Fireforge kit. <clears throat> it just gives it a really strange look. I mean, they're just odd. They're, but I, I love them so much. I love painting them. I love building them. I absolutely love kit bashing these. And again, one, once they're painted and washed, they'll go coarse and really look the part. Um, the last unit I built is, now in, in Turn 28, you can have a unit of skirmishers called Chaff. So with these guys, what I've done is these are the only the only one the only unit in, the, in, my, in this entire army that have got missile weapons. Uh, I've, I've based them singly as well because they're skirmishers. Now what these are are um, again the Hundred Years War Perry bodies with the Frostgrave cultist heads and the the handgun. So the arquebus the arquebus is from a few a few of the different Perry kits, and I've given them all the same look, so all, all the same weapons and all the same style hoods on their on their cultist masks tell a lie that guy's got a bit of green stuff there because they didn't quite fit but that was sort of a rarity <laughs> for these for these figures um and so they're going to be skirmishes so the only missile weapons in the entire uh, army um i've also finished i've not i've not finished building the sort of the, the 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 snobs for this yet but i've built this this guy he, this this guy is, is going to be a toady i absolutely love this i love this figure so much <clears throat> so that head that comes with the uh the the frostgrave kit no sorry that, not the frostgrave kit the fireforge kit and it's a bird unfortunately ripping out his eye um doesn't look as he's having the best of days i'll be honest uh but he's he, he, he's gonna be one of the toadies as you can see there it's dried really coarse on those on those tufts um, and I've gone for a really sort of a muted palette uh, I want them to look drab and miserable and depressing that's that's turn 28 and for the flesh I've gone for a sort of not quite zombie-esque but getting there I really a really rather pallid um, hue on on that flesh it just needs to be based I need to make another toady uh, obviously is another toady here but he's not being painted so again so the body is, is from the, one of the Frostgrave cultists, and the head and the arms are from the Fireforge kit. And his tufts on the back there makes him stand out as a bit of a. He's a toady. He's not quite a toff. The toff I've not I've not built or painted yet. Um, but it's, this is going to be a two two toady one toff list. Okay. And last but not least, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, this, these are from the Knights of Shellwood, which means I can take snail riders, <laughs> snail knights. And this, which I fit that in, <laughs> this is um, this is a snail knight. So as you can see, it's quite a hefty looking model. Um, you compare it to <laughs> this chap here. And all this is, it's a garden ornament I picked up from Amazon and painted. And then I, I mounted a knight in the top. Um, now his little, his little, the howder, the turret type thing there, is from the Victrix elephant kit. And I just plopped it on top of there and put a peri knight in there and again with his tufts that was a lot of fun to build and it was quite easy to do as well i'm going to be getting a second one because i can take two of these um but that <laughs> i've been i've been i've been wargaming for many years and i think this is one of the strangest things <laughs> i think i've ever built but i absolutely love it i just love i love the whole aesthetic of this game it's just so fantastic and it's addictive as well you keep looking at different miniatures and thinking you oh, can i use that for turnip i absolutely can um so that is my that's my snail knight <laughs> so i'm looking forward to making a second one of those in the very near future so there we go um something a bit different 
um, for the channel. Uh, I do love Term 28. There's going to be a, a lot more Term 28 videos. Um, people keep asking me questions about how I build them, how I paint them. So I'm going to be running through sort of showcases, um, kit bashing videos. Hopefully, hopefully, um, battle reports from, um, we can get around to doing those. But I thought it would be interesting to show you sort of the, the difference between the painted and the unpainted units, what they look like um, when they've just been freshly kit bashed, but also the difference between the, the different the different um, types you can get. So these, these are more sort of Napoleonic black powder, and you've got the more medieval dark fantasy ones, but part of the same game, and these are going to be oppositions in future games of Turnip 28. Well, I hope you found that I hope you found it really weird, because um, that's what I love about Turn 28. It's so ridiculously strange, but I love it. Um, but as you, if you've got any questions about this, which I imagine one or two people may have some questions, um, just leave them down below in the comments, and I will respond to all comments and questions. Uh, but as always, um, thank you for watching. Do take care. May your dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So, bye-bye for now.